Yeah! Everyone knows that my favorite moment after time skip was Kaido's introduction to the story. But what was my favorite moment before time skip? Well, it was the introduction of the 11 supernovas. They all had great designs, they looked badass, they had badass and cool abilities. And after time skip, Do Flamingo literally said that the new generation, aka the 11 supernovas, are going to be something else, okay? They are going to be on another level from the previous generation. They have a lot of potential. So how much potential did they actually have? Well, Luffy and Zoro, let's talk about them first. Luffy and Zoro have crazy amounts of plot armor. Luffy is now literally a god, became a god by dying, defeated the strongest creature alive, he became a Yonko. And Zoro also has plot armor. He fought against a Yonko commander, all his bones were broken, and then randomly he was given miracle medicine, he was able to defeat the Yonko commander. So when Do Flamingo said that the new generation is something else, well, when it comes to Zoro and Luffy, the two characters with crazy plot armor, yeah, it's true for them. But what about the other supernovas? Well, the other supernovas were a fucking joke. Remember the badass introduction? Oh, these guys are going to do something epic in the story. Just wait and see. Well, what did they actually do? Let's start with Bonnie. It is now revealed that Bonnie is a 10 year old girl. Bonnie was 10 years old when she was introduced as the supernova. Think about how crazy this is. A 10 year old girl was one of the 11 supernovas. The supernovas are a joke. They are a complete joke. A 10 year old, a 10 year old girl was one of the 11 supernovas. What the heck? I mean, this is ridiculous. It was always established that Nico Robin is the youngest person with the highest bounty because she was the number one threat to the world government. She's the only living person who is able to read secrets from hundreds of years ago. Secrets that the world government does not want anyone to know. And it was always established that Nico Robin at, as a child, having a 79 million berry bounty was absolutely insane. But now it turns out that there's a 10 year old girl with 140 million berry bounty. Because why not? And you know what's most insane about all of this? Kaido at the age of 15 was an absolute monster. And Nico Robin as a young child was the number one threat to the world government. So Nico Robin and a teenage Kaido combined have a lower bounty than Bonnie. How does this make any sense? Bonnie's character has also been retconned to shit. Her abilities were supposed to be about, oh, she can change the age of people. But now she can also literally turn into a knockoff sun god Nika. Bonnie has rubber abilities like Luffy. She can turn her fist into the size of a skyscraper, because why not? Also, it was revealed that Nika, the sun god, was a massive part of Bonnie's life. One of her goals was to find Nika. But when Luffy, a guy with rubber abilities, punches a world noble to free the slaves, Bonnie was pissed off pre-time skip. Because that's not out of character at all. I mean, she knew that Nika was the freer of slaves. She knew that Nika had rubber abilities. I mean, Kuma literally told her that Nika is made out of rubber. Turning Sabaudi when a rubber guy fought against the world government to free the slaves. How dare Luffy, a guy with rubber abilities, save the slaves? Because she threatened to kill Luffy in the new world. How dare this guy, who looks like Nika, acts like Nika, has the same abilities as Nika, frees the slaves, just like Nika. How dare this guy? 
do what I'm supposed to be looking for. I mean, we saw Bonnie's flashback. In the flashback, she said, I want to find Nika for my father. And then when she finds Nika turning Sabaudi, she's like, Luffy, I'm gonna kill you. Fuck you, Luffy. Yeah, not retconned at all. Nika was planned from the start, I guess. Now let's talk about Mad Monk Oroge. Oroge had a lot of potential. He was supposed to be one of the most badass characters in One Piece. Turning Whole Cake Island, when Oroge took down a Yonko commander, I remember every single One Piece reviewer losing their shit. The One Piece YouTubers were literally calling Oroge Mad T Monk. They were hyping this guy like crazy. Because he took out a Yonko commander. Oh man, Uroj took out a Yonko commander. Uroj is so strong and badass. Well, that didn't last for long. Because Luffy always has to be at the center of attention. Luffy always has to be the best. Luffy always has to take the spotlight away from every other character. Because Uroj defeating one of the sweet commanders is literally nothing now. Luffy came to Whole Cake Island and he took out two sweet commanders, not one but two. And after Whole Cake Island, Luffy defeated the strongest creature alive. He defeated a Yonko. And if that's not crazy enough, Zoro defeated a Yonko commander. Sanji defeated a Yonko commander. A random stray dog from down the street. Okay, just a random flea ridden dog defeated a Yonko commander. Uroj's accomplishment means nothing. And let's be honest, Uroj defeated the weakest sweet commander. Even all of Kaido's Yonko commanders were stronger than the Yonko commander that Uroj took out. So I guess Uroj is kind of irrelevant to the story. He went from Mad D Monk to Mad D Jump. The Red Head Pirates fought against Keith Pirates. Shanks took out Keith like he was nothing. He took out Keith in a couple of panels. I mean, turning Wano, Oda built this character up. Oda gave him an awakening ability. Oda had him defeat a Yonko. And in the next arc, a Yonko literally bullies Keith to death. Just, just absolutely destroys him. What was the point of this character? And uh, there is no way that Keith survived because his entire ship was destroyed, his entire crew was killed. He's drowning at the bottom of the ocean right now. Now you may be thinking that maybe Killer, Keith's number one friend, is going to save him. Well, no, that's not going to happen because Shanks! Shanks took out Killer off screen. All we see is ki Killer's fucking corpse. That's it. During Wano, Killer got so much character development. And after Wano, the character was so useless that Oda had the guy defeated off screen. So yeah, there is no way that Keith and Killer survived this. I mean, this is one piece. No one actually ever dies. Somehow they will return with some bullshit. Uh, explanation or maybe it won't even be explained because there have been a lot of characters that have returned from death and it has never been explained how they returned but the fact is that the entire ship was destroyed the crew was destroyed everyone should be dead at the bottom of the ocean if Oda brings these two characters back then that's absolutely insane out of all the supernovas, Eustace Keed had the most potential. So it's uh, really sad to see what Oda did to this character. Eustace Keed was always one step ahead of Luffy. He had a higher bounty than Luffy turning Sabaudi and after time skip. I think it was clear to everyone that Eustace Keed at one point is going to be Luffy's main rival in the story. So yeah, this character had a lot of potential, and in the end, his entire purpose in the story was to show off how strong Shanks is.
he was just he was just fooder for Shanks, and that's pretty sad. Hawkins looked bad as he had insane abilities. He literally used his own crew as uh, little toys. Okay, you kill Hawkins, he uses his uh, table fruit ability, and instead of him getting injured, Hawkins' crew pretty much took all his injuries. The second time we saw him, it was him telling uh, Brownbeard that your time's up. I'm reading this card and it says that you're dead. And that was badass. Now here's something I don't understand. Hawkins clearly said that Brownbeard's time is up. But somehow, during Punk Hazard, Brownbeard was alive. Like, how was he alive? That was never explained. Oda never explained this shit. I mean, Hawkins literally saw the future told the guy that he's going to die, and then the guy was alive a couple of arcs later. Okay, so this character, with a lot of potential, looks cool, has a crazy ability. So how is this guy handled after time skip? Well, he is Kaido's little bitch! He is Kaido's little bitch. Hawkins was just Kaido's minion. That's it. And in the end, he was so irrelevant. That Oda never even bothered to explain if he survived one arc or not. He got defeated and after that it was like, okay, uh, he's on the ground, is Hawking dead? Well, we don't know, Oda didn't care. Oda said that this character is so irrelevant, I'm not even bother, I'm not even going to bother explaining if he survived or not. Next up we have Apu. So when it comes to Apu, this guy was the only character able to injure Kisaru pre-time skip. So I had a lot of hope for Apu. I mean, Kisaru literally took out Hawkins, he took out uh, X Drake, he took out everyone. And then out of nowhere, Apu comes and starts playing his music and blows Kisaru's upper body off. So I was like, damn, Apu's kind of badass, you know, I'm, I wonder what he's going to do. Well. Well, it turns out that he's not going to do anything. I mean, it's been such a long time, we have never even seen Apu after that moment. I mean, I think we saw Apu when Keith and Killer met with him, but wasn't that the last time we saw him? I can't think of any other time we saw Apu. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was Apu on Wano? Uh, yeah, he was on Wano. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot that Apu was on Wano because he didn't do anything. First of all, he only appeared pretty much at the end of Wano arc. And he didn't even do anything in the entire story. He, he was Kaido's little minion just like Hawkins. And uh, he befriended a number, right? What else did Apu do in the story? Uh, no idea. Um, nothing. He didn't do anything. What was the point of this character? So yeah, Apu, another supernova, had a lot of potential wasted by Oda. The only supernovas that can have any character development are Luffy and Zoro. Everyone else is a fooder character, okay? Irrelevant if they survive, irrelevant if they die, who cares about them? Another character that was ruined was X Drake. I like the idea that X Drake was working for Kaido, but secretly he was actually working for the Marines. He was just a just a spy. And X Drake, just like every other supernova, had a lot of potential. I mean, he was literally the first ancient zone type user introduced in the series. Okay, so how did Oda ruin X Drake? Well, it's very simple. He fought against CP0 agents, the masked agents, and they brutally defeated the guy. These same agents, one of them got destroyed by Iso. Another one of these agents got one shooted by Kaido. The third agent ran away like a p pussy. And, the, I mean, I made two videos about CP0, how pathetically weak they were. And to have these fodder characters 
Peter wants to destroy X Drake. Absolutely destroy X Drake. I mean, X Drake looked like he was dead. He looked like a corpse. It's ridiculous. Oda turned X Drake into a weakling, getting defeated by masked CP0 agents. Get out of here, man. You ain't worthy of being a supernova. By some miracle, Capone PG was not ruined. He's still a great character. Oda somehow managed to not destroy Capone PG's character. By some miracle. Everyone else got screwed over, but Capone PG is still a great character. Now let's move on to Law. Trafalgar Water D Law had a lot of potential in the story. This guy was a part of the main cast for like, how many arcs? Punk Hazard, uh, Tres Rosa, So, Wano. He was with the Straw Hats for a long time. He gained a lot of uh, character development. He had a sad backstory like most of the main characters. For the longest time, Law actually felt like he was a main character in the story. The problem is that, well, during Tres Rosa, it was revealed that the only reason why Law went after Kaido is because of Do Flamingo. Because Do Flamingo was providing weapons for Kaido and the artificial devil fruits for Kaido. And Do Flamingo was absolutely hated by Law, okay? Law wanted to kill the guy. He, because Do Flamingo killed Kurason, and Kurason was like a older brother or father to Law. So La fought against Do Flamingo and Do Flamingo absolutely destroyed the guy. La was no match for him. And then two arcs later, turning Wano, La fights against Big Mom. All of a sudden, La has an awakening ability. He literally pulls an awakening ability out from his ass, okay? It makes no sense at all. His entire story was to defeat to Flamingo to get revenge for Corazon and he allowed to Flamingo to absolutely brutally humiliate him and then turning Wano the guy has a awakening ability never mentioned when he got that awakening ability never mentioned how he got that awakening ability he just randomly had an awakening ability and he defeated Big Mom <laughs> 